So I recently received a request from Steph and her husband Wally on how to shoot baseball games. I don't know what makes her think that you know, I would be qualified. It's not like I was a starting pitcher in high school or anything like that. Now, I've been lucky enough to shoot a Yankee game. I was there in the third base camera well with the rest of the professional photographers. And what I'm gonna cover today instead though is what settings I use, but then also six tips, tricks, on how to take really great shots for your local little league, local softball, or men's league games, someplace where you can get really close and personal. So with that said, here we go. So for the first one, let's get the technical stuff out of the way. Ideally, you want to shoot with a really long lens, something like a 200 millimeter lens. A longer focal length is going to allow you to zoom in on the action, even if it's across the field. For shutter speed, you want to have minimum 1 250th. I like to try to be minimum 1 400th of a second. Uh, as low an ISO as possible. Uh, I like to shoot wide open so the aperture is really large so you get that really nice uh, soft background. It's not necessary to shoot raw, just shoot JPEG for sports. Last but not least is to always shoot in continuous mode. Uh, even on your iPhone, just press and hold and take multiple shots. Um, this way you can catch the action better, which actually leads us to the second tip. So when I'm shooting sports, I split up the action into three parts. One is anticipation, two is action, three is extension. So for anticipation, it's basically exactly what it sounds like. It's the athlete seeing the action coming. In this case, it's a batter anticipating the pitch coming toward him. For action, the subject is in the middle of an athletic move. So in this case, it's the swing of the baseball bat. And the last one is extension. I love these shots because it's the best combination of movement, action, and athleticism. So that's what I was saying before, to shoot in continuous mode all the time because then you have a much better chance of capturing the anticipation, the action, uh, and the extension, and you can actually tell a really good story just in that quick brief picture burst. The third tip is to get low, as low as possible. And this is really important when you're shooting kids athletics. For example, in this shot, we have Milo fielding the ground ball. Because of the fact that we're at his eye level, it becomes that much more intimate and intense in terms of what he's about to do. And this goes for not just the action photos. Uh, even when you're having team meetings, take a look at this. Get down low, get close to that baseline, use that baseline as a way to lead the eye toward the main subject and to get shots like this. It tells a different kind of story what's going on for baseball. So the next one is the relationships. Always remember the relationships. Relationships to each other as teammates, to the opponents, to family, even to the equipment. So here's an example of a picture with teammates relating to each other. And here's a photo of the subject in relation to their opponent. Here are a couple of shots of the subject in relation to family. And finally, the relationship of the athlete to objects, whether it be trophies or even a baseball. The fifth one deserves a tutorial all on its own, and that's composition using the rule of thirds. So if we take a look at this image, the original was actually much broader crop than this. But notice what I did was I used the rule of thirds. I lined up this line and this line with the subject and the opponent, thereby creating a really interesting composition that really allows you to focus on that subject and his line of sight to the opponent. Pretty cool, huh? So another really important use of the rule of thirds in baseball is that horizon line in your pictures. You're gonna be outdoors anyway, right? You might as well use the best composition possible. So in this example, what you'll notice is I lined up that bottom line against the horizon of this green baseball field. And it gives you 
really nice composition. So the last tip is to do something that doesn't necessarily come naturally when we're shooting, it's to have both eyes open at the same time. So usually we go like this, but really if you have your other eye open, you have a wider field of view in terms of what's happening with the action. This way you can quickly move and catch the shot off to your left. Now it's not perfect because you're still gonna miss stuff on the right, but it's better off seeing with two eyes in terms of catching the action rather than just one. So that's it for the tips. There could be a ton of other things I could probably throw at you, Steph and Wally. Uh, everything from, you know, using a fashion and portrait lens for the action, shooting wide open at f1.2. But that's it for now. Uh, keep the questions coming and uh, now let's hope for a really great baseball season. Go Yankees.